grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you that you are prayer answering God, that you're in charge, you're in control. Hallelujah. There's nothing that takes place on this earth that you're not aware of. And so, Father, we thank you today, Lord, that you're about to even speak to us and minister to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I just want to encourage us, you know, this morning, um, you know, we, we're on a Zoom platform, so it's easy to just send a link. So let's, I, I want to encourage us to send a link out to a friend, you know, who may be in need, of, uh, maybe going through a difficult time, or maybe in, in need of a, a, a revelation, or they may be in need of inspiration from the Lord. I want to invite them to just, just come to the service. Amen? We're virtual. You know, and I, I, I you know, church, I, I believe that in the midst of everything that is taking place, and God is still on the throne, you know, and I, I am a, I'm a strong believer of the word of God. I love the word of God. Amen. So I want to just read something for us this morning. Uh, it's taken from Psalm chapter 27. Psalm chapter 27. I will be in Psalm 27 this morning. Uh, when found, say amen. Amen. Psalm chapter 27. I want us to look at it. This morning, you know, they, 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 they had me the mic very early. So, I, I, you know, I guess in that, you know, I have all the time to preach. Amen. So, <laughs> hallelujah. So, we're going to go. All right. Psalm 27. Look at this. I'm just reading uh, just a few verses. But look at Psalm 27. I'm reading from verse 1. Here's what David said. The Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength or the stronghold of my life of whom shall i be afraid when evil doers come against me to devour my flesh my foes and my enemies stumble and fell though an army deploy against me my heart is not afraid though war breaks out all around me or all against me still i am confident i will stop right there but the psalmist said the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear i want to minister to you this morning uh, from the topic the lord is the Lord is. That's it. That's, our, that's my title this morning. The Lord is. You know, one of the powerful things and uh, powerful revelations I believe the Lord shared with me uh, in my time of prayer and meditation concerning uh, this season that we're in, this season of COVID and lockdown and start back and start back and lockdown and, and all of that that has taken place. Uh, I, I, one of the things that the Holy Spirit uh, shared with me is that this is a season where foundations are tested all right this is a season where foundations god is allowing this entire season this all of that is taking place covid everything that is taking place the lord i heard the lord say that in this season foundations are being tested the bible said where the foundations be destroyed what shall the righteous do and so it's important and Jesus shared something with us uh, that I don't think we have the, we quite grasp the power of. He said, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right. And he said, now, I want you to understand something about being a builder, about being a contractor. No contractor. Every time you get a project, if you get a project, right, you get a project to build a building. The first thing you're going to look for, you're going to look out for the weather. You're going to look out for uh, 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 negative circumstances that will jeopardize your project because no uh, builder starts a project not knowing everything that they need to know about that project so if they want to build a school let's say you want to build a school in in in, in freeport or you want to build a school in sealots you want to go in that particular area and you want to survey the area you want to make sure that you know if it is the area flooded flood prone you want to make sure that throughout the duration of your project you want to make sure is it, uh, uh, will it have rain? Uh, am I building in rainy season? So it, it's, uh, it, uh, every builder, 
everyone who's a contractor, if you want to build something, your first thing you're going to look at is the circumstances that will come against your project, right? Now, Jesus is the only builder who looks at the very circumstances of the project and still say, I build my church. You, you, you don't understand. Amen. He, so he looks at the very, the, the, all of the negative circumstances around the project. Uh, because he's the only builder that can build in the midst of opposition. So he said, I build my church. And then he said, and the gates of hell. Now, don't get me started about the gates. Because the, the very strength in, in those days, the very strength of a city is in their gates. All right. So you find that even in, in the book of Judges, when Samuel went down to the Philistines, and the Bible said that he, they, they, they tried to corner him. What Samson did, Samson ripped off the gates from the, from the hinges. All right. And I want you to understand something about Samson. Samson, forget Hollywood. And, you know, portraying Samson to be this big, strong muscle man with muscles on in the eye. That's not, that's not the Bible. All right. Because if Samson was so strong, then Delilah would have asked Samson, where did your great strength lie? Amen. And so it, it, he had to be a very weak or frail looking man in order for Delilah to ask him, Samson, where your strength lie? Uh, because there's no one who will be strong and, and you ask him where your strength lies. Of course, it's in the muscles. All right. So Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I, I, I read that article about, you know, the pastors that said um, that churches, many churches will not open. I said, the devil is a liar. Let me tell you something. We're not just going uh, in to, in this season, it's not, that even, we, we're not, it's not that we're going to even open back, but we're going to open back stronger. We're going to open other branches. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. Jesus said, yes. I build my church. So mm -hmm. when you look, I, I, he's, this, he's the contractor. He's the one that is building. And he looks at all of the negative circumstances surrounding the church. And he still says, I will, I will build it. Uh, you see, that's the power of foundation. Uh, because you see, the, you, you, it's, it's an important church that we build on the right foundation and foundations are being tested the, the very core of what do you believe do you believe do you really believe what you say do you really believe what you say do you really believe what you what you hear do you really believe what you read and so god is uh, uh, god is allowing foundations to be tested all right. And Jesus said, made a statement. He said, if you hear these sayings of mine, you do them, you will be likened unto a wise man, which built his house on a rock. And so he, so he's not just building the church, but he's also building your home. And so I want you to understand that not just the foundations of the church will be tested, but the foundation of your very home will be tested because you need to understand church that as long as you're, you're, you're building anything, all right, opposition will come. And so this particular psalm, this particular psalm is so powerful to me, it's so vital, it's so crucial, because David is now questioning. He, his very foundation is being tested. David is now, uh, you know, uh, uh, surrounded by so much enemies, and he's facing the latest enemy. And this enemy is not Saul, it's not the Philistines. This enemy is so different, because this enemy, is David's son. Mm. You see, because sometimes, church, sometimes, uh, you, 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 you know, you, you can fight off so much enemies. You can fight off um, so much other, ex you know, uh, things on the outside. But the problem is that when you find resistance, when you find adversities in your very family, in your very home, and so here it is, David is in a place where he's, he, he, his son is rising up against him, his son Absalom, right? I want you to just picture what is taking place here. So David now is a custom, he's a custom fighting uh, Goliath. He can take him down. David is a custom resisting Saul, all right? Saul, you know, Saul wanted to kill David. And the Bible said that the, the, the conviction of the Holy Ghost came upon him. And he said, how can I touch the Lord's anointed? And so he, his very, uh, uh, the, the, the word of the Lord to him is, don't touch my anointed. Even if he, he is wayward, even if he's wacko, all right? Don't touch him, all right? But so David could have deal with that. But the problem is that when you have an enemy, and it's more, it does more damage when you touch him than when you leave him alone. 
I don't know if you ever had an enemy like that. You had an enemy that, you know, you, you in your own heart, you want to get rid of them, but you know that if you get rid of it, if you ask God to deliver you, then there's something a, 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 of you that will be taken away. And so this is what David is facing. So David is facing his son, Absalom. And the powerful thing about this church is that his son represented two things. His son represented his past. His son represented his future. What do I mean? Uh, I, his son represented his past simply because uh, if you remember when David sinned with Bathsheba, God said to him that the sword will not depart from your home. And so Absalom is just a, a, a manifestation of the, the, the very uh, judgment of God upon David. So it's Absalom reminded David of his past. And the other thing about Absalom is that he is David's future because he's his son. He is supposed to be his, his successor. He's supposed to be his legacy. And so here it is. He's faced in with one enemy, but his one enemy is opposing two different things. And so I wonder if, if, they, if there's any of you who understand what it's like to have your past and your future is as though your, your past and your future is looking uncertain. And if there's anything that this COVID has done, it is, it is kind of causing us and is allowing us, or is, 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 uh, the enemy is using it to kind of have us either looking back or looking forward. Because you're, 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 you're in a place now where you, you, you don't know what is to come, the, the, the uncertainty of tomorrow the uncertainty of next week, the uncertainty of next month. I wonder, would I be in a job in, 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 at the end of 2021? Will I be in a job at the end of uh, 2022? Will I be in a job? You see something, I, I remember what happened in 2020. So you're now tossed. You're either in 2020 or you're in 2024. All right, and this is what David is, is, is facing. He's going through this. And so he's in the, uh, a, a battle now. He's in a real battle. And this is why I love the word of God. Let me tell you why I love the word of God. Because if I'm an author and I write in a book, right, I, I would want to portray, right, whether it's true or not, I would want to portray to my audience, right, the best version of myself. I want to sell the best version of myself, right? You, you agree with that? Amen. You want to sell the best version of, it, of yourself. But the beauty of the word of God is that God is the author and God allows in his word to be recorded, he allows it to be in, a, in such a way that people question him. He, he allows in, his, in the word, and this is, and is, is, is very true in the Psalms. This is why the Psalms is the most well-read book, is the most read book in the entire Bible, because there's an entire book of people and their feelings. Hallelujah. I, and if there's one thing COVID has done, COVID has, COVID has, so many people in their feelings. And so David, now he's in his feelings, as we would say. He's, he's in this place where I, I don't want to kill this enemy. Because if I kill this enemy, then my future is looking uncertain. But I can't allow my, 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 this enemy to continue because he keeps reminding me of my past. And so here it is. David is now battling between these two things. And then he got a revelation and he, he started by saying it. And I, I will not even preach from the whole uh, a few verses. I'm just going to look at the first three words. He said, the Lord is. He said, the Lord is. What, do, what does he mean by that? He means that I, my past is looking so gloomy. My future is looking so uncertain. But you know what? The Lord is. Yes. Hallelujah. He said the Lord is. What does that, what does that mean? It, he, he's literally saying, because one of the things the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to be so distracted with the past and he wants you to be so distracted with the future that you lose sight of what is. And he said the Lord is. is, is it, he, he's saying the Lord, he, listen to me. The beautiful thing about God is his very, not just his presence, but the fact that he's present, 
And so he's saying the Lord is. So 2020 was. 2022 may be. But you know what? The Lord is. So in other words, he's saying that the Lord, uh, the, the only one that is certain, the only one that is sure is the Lord. I wonder if we need to, we need to get this attitude, church, that in spite of what was and in spite of what may be, you know what? The Lord is. Hallelujah. He said, the Lord is. You know what my Bible tells me? My Bible tells me in Hebrews chapter 11 that, that he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the number one uh, thing that you need to grasp as you come to the Lord, you need to know that the Lord is. I know it sounds simple. I know it sounds like like a preschool or like Sunday school, but I, I I believe that many believers don't get that in their spirits because they're so consumed with what was and they're so un they're so unsure of what will be that they lose sight of what is. He said, "The Lord is, the Lord is, the Lord is." It reminds me of Moses. You remember Moses, right? So Moses at the burning bush. The Bible said that he, he had a moment with, with God and the bush was burning, was not consumed. And the Bible said something so powerful. It said that Moses was afraid to look on God. Why? Because Moses was so consumed. Remember, we talked about history a few weeks ago. So he, Moses was so concerned about his history that he was afraid to, 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 to embrace what is. And many believers today are afraid to embrace what is. Church, I want to let you know that COVID is not the be all and end all. I want you to understand that though our future may look uncertain, one thing that remains constant is that the Lord is. So in other words, regardless of what I go through, that word is, it speaks of the present. It speaks of now. It speaks of present tense. It speaks of the fact that he is right here, right now. Another place in the Psalm said he's our very present help in time of trouble. It's one thing to be help, but it's another thing to be very present. And so he's our very present help in time of trouble. The Lord is. Come on, just, just say that in your own spirit. Just say that the Lord is. The Lord is. Just remind yourself. Just say it in your, your heart. Just, just, you know, make it your status. Whatever it is, the Lord is. Because I want you to realize, church, that in order for you to receive anything from God, you must believe that he is. So David said, the Lord is. Moses here, he's in a place where the Bible said he's afraid to look on God. Why was this? Because when Moses was in Egypt and he was one of the high ranking right under Pharaoh, he was about to be the next Pharaoh. He was actually in training to be the next Pharaoh. And Moses understands this. He, so whenever people come into the presence of greatness in, in, in the Egyptian culture. They would, they would put, they would turn away their face. They would be afraid to look on the, 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 on the Pharaoh. So Moses is accustomed with people. When he, whenever they come into his presence, they would be afraid to look on him. Why? Because they see themselves as just peasants, as just nothing because of their past, because of their history. And so because they know that they were bought as slaves, all right? And so they were, they were afraid to look on Pharaoh. So when Moses saw the burning bush, he, he was afraid to look on God. There are many of you right now, you're afraid to go into deep service in the Lord. You're afraid to take that next step. You're afraid to serve God at a more serious capacity. Why? Because you, you, you keep looking at what was and you're unsure of what will be. So you're, you're afraid to look on God. So Moses is in a place where he's just afraid to look on God. But God did something. Here's what he did. He said, Moses, I, I understand that you have some issues. Oh, hallelujah. I understand that you, 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 you have some concerns because you, you had a past. You killed a man. I understand that, Moses. So, he's, so God said, here's, here's what I'm going to do, Moses. Moses said, who shall I say send me? And here was what God said. He said, I want you to go down to Pharaoh Moses. And I want you to say, tell him I am sent you. And so that I am Moses is not just going to deliver the people from Pharaoh. It's going to deliver you too. Because when you understand that, that, that you go to Pharaoh and all you're saying, I am. 
I am. I am. It's as though God is, is, is healing Moses every time he, he confesses it because he, he wants Moses to understand that he's the God of the moment. And church, I want us to understand that he is the God of the moment. Paul said this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Hallelujah. Reaching forth to those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. David said, the Lord is. I, I, I know that Absalom reminds me of what was. I know that what will be is uncertain. But you know, one thing I know for sure is that the Lord is. David is sitting in a place of darkness. He's sitting in a place where he's, he's almost uh, torn in between the two. And he said, you know what? The Lord is my light. Hallelujah. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He asks a question. There's a question mark. And whenever there's a question mark, you know it's a question, right? And so he asks this question. And the, the, the beauty about this is that when you pose a question, all right, is the person that is reading the question can answer. And so in other words, he's saying, whom shall I face? It's a rhetorical question, only man say, but he's saying it to, to just uh, remind himself of who God is. Church, I think we need to revisit our foundations. I believe we need to revisit, uh, we need to really refocus because now you see that all of what is going on around us it is beaten upon the house. That is our relationship with God. But I wonder how many houses are for. And so when I read that article, I was saying, you know, uh, it's because if these houses fall, if these, these houses and the churches are no more, it's, it's, it's a question of foundation. So David said, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Here's what he said. The Lord is the strength. Oh, so he, in other words, David is saying now, the Lord is my foundation. So in other words, now he's in a place, so he was so torn, but now is as though, and this is the beauty of a house. This is the beauty of when you build something on a strong foundation, because a foundation can only be tested when there's adversities. You didn't hear what I just said. The, found, the only time a foundation is tested is when there's adversities. And so in other words, if you, the only time you know that a house is flood proof, what has to happen? Flood. The only time you know that a house is earthquake ready, what has to happen? An earthquake. Because there's no way you can test the, the foundation of something unless there's a, there's a test to that very structure. And so David now, his very structure is being tested. Because out of all the enemies, he now has one that is the most uh, uh, pressing, is the most complex. So now his very foundation has been this tested. And here's what he said. He said, you know what? I realize now that the Lord is my foundation. He said, I realize now, church, I realize now. It's only when you're in it you realize. I realize now that the Lord is the strength of my life. Hallelujah. Of whom shall I be afraid? I realize now that God is my strength. And so it, it, the beautiful thing about that story that Jesus told about the foundations is that he said the rains came and the rains beat upon it and the house did not fall. And then he went on to, to, to say that if you hear these words and you don't put it into practice, you don't practice the word of God. What happens now is that when the rains come, you see your, your house looking nice because it's built on sand. Listen to me. Listen to me. It, it, when you build a house on a rock, it, 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 it throws off the very... Oh my God. It throws off. When you build a house on a rock, all right, it, it, it does not even look... It may not look as nice as the one that built on a sand. Because the, the sand is smooth, the sand is even, the sand is level. So the, the very structure will look different. And so the house that is built upon the rock, what happens is that the house may look strange to the, to the people outside. And this is what you need to understand. Christianity, true Christianity, looks strange to the people on the outside. 
It looks strange. It, it, what they're saying, but how this house looking so? How this house looking twist so? How this house looking bend so? Why this house not looking like the other house? Why this house not looking like this nice house that built on the sand? And the only time the people appreciate that house is when the storm comes. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, church. I Listen to me, leave me. Let me Lord, not look the, the, the right to the ungodly. Leave me, let me look like a weirdo. Leave me, let me look the, how I look into everyone else. But I know that my true value will be realized when COVID reach. My true value, my true, the true strength of my, my house is tested. And because Amen. the strength of the house is tested, then now when all the other houses in the neighborhood fall in, hallelujah, when all the other houses falling up at the slightest way, the same house that they look at that look funny, the same house that they look at that look, you, you know, I, this house not, not, not in style like this house. This house, because it is built on a rock, it, it, the very foundation, all you see is just the foundation and how twisted looking. But when they, they, the storm reach, everyone else coming out and they're looking at this house that look funny. And that house is the only house that stand in church. I want you to understand. Amen. This is a time where pretty Christianity wouldn't stand. Mm -mm. This is a time where pretty, uh, 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 just a pretty looking walk with God would not would not do. It's the, 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 the believers that have the foundation. It's the believers that understand that the Lord is the strength. The, my, my strength is not in my my own uh, desire, my own abilities. My strength is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this is this is what David is saying, the Lord, the Lord. And he said something that my sister said, sang about uh, this morning. She, he said something so powerful. And, and this is, this is, this is, I want to look at here. Fast forward now. He said, he said something. He said, I, 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 I would have fainted. He said, I, I, I almost, I, this is the same, this is the same Psalm when he said this, he said, I, 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 I would have fainted. I, I, let me get it for you. Let me get it for you. He said, I, 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 I would have fainted unless I believe to see, hallelujah. I, I, unless I believe to see, I, I want to believe to see something. I, I'm believing to see something. He said, I would have fainted hallelujah 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 i would have fainted I, he said i almost the word the word would have it speaks of almost he said i i i, I almost i almost fainted when I saw Absalom coming up against me, I almost fainted. I, I, when I saw COVID and I see the, the lockdown and the start back and the lockdown and jobs in jeopardy, I almost fainted. But he said, but you see, this is the time where my foundation kicks in. This is the time where my, because when everything else is shaking the house, all the other houses swaying like they like they're praising the Lord, not knowing that they go and fall. Sometimes people look as though they're praising the Lord, not knowing that they're on the verge of just giving up. And don't let don't let the, the sight fool you. And so, but when the, the house with the, the rock begin to sway with the wind, it just it just you're not understanding what I'm saying. The, when the house now, Amen. when the wind begins to beat this, this this house that is upon a rock, by the time it, it make one rock. The, the, because of the foundation, because it was on a rock, it just straightened back up. And now because, and the beautiful thing about a foundation is that when a foundation is, is shaken, it's as though it settles more. Hallelujah. Look, let me, let me leave. Because we're on Zoom, I can preach all day. But let me leave. Let me leave you with this. I want you to understand, church. I want you to understand that our foundation will be tested. A faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. And so now we're in a place where we're going to be seeing now foundations. So look out for foundations. I want you to build a foundation in your own life. Build a foundation in your family. Build a time of prayer. Build a time of, of personal devotion. And David said, I, I almost... I almost, I, I, and I, I, as he would say, I, I almost tap out. You know, when it, when it, when you're, you're, you're in MMA, 
and your opponent have you pinned down. You you you, you tap the you tap the, the, the floor, and by tapping the floor, you're saying I that's it, I give up. And David said, man, I almost tapped the floor. He said, I, I, when when Absalom came up against me, I feel like this was the the, the straw that break the camel the camel back. And so David said, no, I, I, I almost tap him. I almost say, you know what, this thing that that's it. But he said. Because of my foundation, I believe to see. Look, he, 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 he said, I, here's what he said. He didn't say I would have fainted unless I seen the goodness of God. He said, I would have fainted unless I believe to see. Man, the foundation of this, of this God we serve is so strong that you don't even have to see it. You just have to believe it. Oh. You just, I, he said, I would have fainted unless I just believe to see. I, I, I don't even need to see it. This is the power of our foundation. I, I just need to believe to see it. And so church, I want to pray for our foundations today. Amen. As I close, Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today. I thank you today that you are our firm, our firm foundation. Hallelujah. The stone that the builders reject has become the head of the corner. So, Father, we, we pray today. I pray today for foundations. I pray for the very foundations of your church. Uh, hallelujah. I, I even remember, oh God, the words of this article. And, Father, we pray tonight. We pray this morning, in fact, for the church. We pray for the body of Christ. Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus that the very foundations will stand sure. Hallelujah. The, the foundation of the Lord stand it strong. The Lord knows them that are his. And so, Father, we pray today, hallelujah, that you will establish your people. I pray today, Father, that you will elevate your people, even in this time that we're about to experience not just a revival, not just a refreshing Lord, but we're going to experience an explosion. Hallelujah. We're going to see, uh, oh God, their foundation. We're going to see the goodness of God. Hallelujah. In the land of the living. This is where the foundation is needed. And so, Father, I pray today, hallelujah, that the faith of your people uh, will remain strong. Hallelujah. That the very foundations and the minds of your people uh, will be stayed on you today. Hallelujah. I bless your people today and I thank you for what you're about to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.